The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction, bring you Dimension X. My name is Donald Hayson, private investigator. Maybe you heard about me. I cracked the Turner kidnapping back in 1946. It wasn't very hard. I paid off a few stool pigeons and went right to the hideout. It did my reputation a lot of good, though. Enough good for me to be called into the mayor's office down at City Hall to see Big Mike Flaherty himself. Well, sit down, Hayson. Sit down. Thanks. <clears throat> You'll have to forgive me for speaking so low. That's a bad case of laryngitis. Yes, it is. Hayson, I've been a fool. You didn't get to be mayor of a city like this by being a fool. Well, you know, Hayson, when you get old, you want to believe a lot of things. You want to believe so hard that sometimes you throw your common sense right out of the window. You get hardening of the cranial arteries to become stupid. Well, what's the pitch, Mr. Mayor? You didn't call me in to discuss the philosophy of growing old gracefully. Hayson, I want you to do some investigating for me. Now, naturally, it must be confidential. This is a confidential business. All right. Yesterday, a man came into this office and sold me a vial of radioactive water that he called the elixir of life. It's supposed to cure you of any disease and keep you healthy enough so you live a hundred years. It's none of my business, Mr. Mayor, but how much did you drop on this gold brick? <clears throat> it's uh, about $50,000. Hmm. You, uh, you don't seem the type somehow. I'll come a little closer, Hayson. I'm going to tell you something my political opponents would give their right arms to know. This uh, isn't laryngitis. It isn't? It's inaccessible for surgery. X-rays would be dangerous. How much time I have left, I don't know. But I live like a man who's going to the chair. Hasten, if I want a vacation, I pack up and go. If I want a drink, I take one. If somebody comes to me with a vial of liquid and says it'll keep me alive, I think twice before I throw him out as a crackpot. What do you want me to do, get your money back? No, oh, the money isn't important. You mean if the loyal opposition got hold of the story, they could use it against you? That's part of it, Hasten. However, you don't have the whole picture yet. Shortly after I bought the stuff, I received an anonymous phone call. I was warned not to take it. I was told it was poison and would kill me in a matter of seconds. Ah, the plot thickens. Now you can appreciate my position. I feel like a man who can either save his life or destroy himself by taking that stuff. So the phone call might be a hoax. Yes. And so might the elixir of life. Yeah, very likely. What do you want me to do about it? Investigate the man who sold it to me. Find out who's behind him, what he knows, where he goes. Nothing else, I want that 50 grand back. What's in it for me? A grand, if he's on the level. 10% if you get the dough back. Deal? Deal. Here's the vial. And here's his card. Uh-huh. Arthur C. Lehman, longevity experts, 45 Billings Courts. Okay, Mr. Mayor, you got yourself a boy. Good. I'll leave your working name and phone number with my secretary. I'll have her send you a check. Right, I'll call you. Uh, <clears throat> you were in there a long time. How'd you make out? Swell. I bought the outer drive for only ten bucks and the cost of mailing. That's kind of high. Last week we were selling it for only five. I'm sorry. I've been listening to too many detective programs. It isn't polite to stare. I was just wondering what your name was sign on the desk says Katharina Cooper. I'll call you Kathy. Oh, uh, I'm supposed to leave my name and phone number. Go ahead. The name is Donald Hasten. But then you knew that, honey. You've been listening to the mayor call me by it for the last half hour. You forgot to shut off the intercom switch. Big Mike's getting kind of careless, isn't he? <laughs> on her face said she was feeding me to the vultures piece by piece. I left my card and walked out. By the time I got home, it was dusk. 
It was the time of early evening when every bachelor wishes he wasn't one, especially after meeting a girl like Kathy. The phone began to ring just as I put my key in the latch. I made it on the fourth ring. Hello? Is this Mr. Donald Hayson? I live alone and don't like it. Were you expecting someone else to answer? This is a warning, Mr. Hayson. Don't touch your bed. I'm sorry, but I don't like to sleep on the floor. The joys of being a private detective. Oh, hello, Jocko. <laughs> How's my boy? That's a good boy. Oh, Jocko, be glad you're not a private detective with all kinds of crackpots calling you up and trying to get your goat. <laughs> nice boy. Sometimes I wish I had shaggy ears like you so I couldn't hear them. <laughs> come on, boy, come on. In the bedroom for a change or something tough. Right, a boy. You want to go out? Well, you just wait until I sit down here and get these shoes. Hey, hey there. Don't jump on that bed, Fred. Now, you know better than that. Jocko. Jocko. Oh, God. The bedspread closed on him the way a Venus flytrap closes on a fly. When I looked more closely, I saw that the bedspread had silvery threads of fine spring steel woven into it. It had been set like a bear trap to spring shut and strangle anything that touched it. Somebody wanted to get rid of me pretty badly. Somebody to whom I had suddenly become very dangerous. Instead, they got Jocko. My poor little Jocko. I decided to take a fast drive over to Billings Court to see Arthur Lehman, longevity expert. Well, uh, I'm looking for Mr. Lehman's office. I'm the janitor. You didn't need to explain. He isn't in. Mr. Lehman isn't in. I just said I was looking for his office. Oh, I detect you. Now, I'm really a vacuum cleaner salesman. I just had these credentials printed up for fun. Here, buy your wife a muskrat coat. I can't take any money. I just keep this till it's spent. What floor is it on? Up those steps, rear. Thanks. Now, well, let's see now. I ought to have one that fits this. There we are. Now, uh, there should be a light switch somewhere. Let's see if I can... Perhaps I can be of assistance, looking for someone? Mr. Lehman? Yes. The janitor told me you weren't in, so I... You picked the lock. Yes, I hope you don't mind. Not at all. If you'd put down the gun... I like to hold it. It gives me a feeling of power. Now, Mr... Hayson. Mr. Hayson, if you will tell me just who you are and what you're doing here. I couldn't sleep. My bed had a dead dog in it. I thought I should consult a health expert. Who sent you? Nobody sent me. I'm like Topsy. I just growed. And I'd like to keep on growing, Mr. Lehman. I don't like people trying to kill me. And I don't like people killing my dog. What makes you think I would try to kill you? Just a hunch. If I really wanted to kill you, I could do it right now, perfectly legally, since you broke in here. That'd be hard to prove. Fortunately for you, Mr. Hasten, I don't have the faintest interest in trying to kill you. On the contrary, it was I who telephoned and warned you about that bed. You know about that phone call? I ought to. I made it. What's the pitch, Mr. Lehman? I can't tell you what the pitch is, Mr. Hasten. But I will tell you this. Give that vial of liquid back to Flaherty and let him cure himself. Or poison himself. Sure. Look, Mr. Lehman, I wasn't born yesterday. Don't give me this elixir of life stuff. There ain't no such thing. And don't try to top me off this case by pretending you're on my side. Mr. Hasten, I warn you, you're playing around with something much too big for you to handle. That vial is the only one of its kind in existence today. The liquid it contains will cure Flaherty if he drinks it. You know, I've seen lots of carnival men peddling flukum and ink sticks, but you're good. You almost convinced me. Almost, but not quite. You're a very stubborn fool, Mr. Hasten. Give back that 50 grand and I'll become very unstubborn. I have a suggestion. I'll bet you do. Why don't you siphon off the tiniest drop of that elixir and have it tested on, say, a rabbit? Then, if it's non-poisonous, you can go back to Flaherty and have him drink it. And while we're proving it's Carmel water, you're on a fast boat to outer Mongolia with 50 Gs. Come with me. Where to? A reputable biological laboratory, any one you choose. 
suppose I don't want to play. Then I'll kill you. You will feel my gun against your side, so don't try anything. Shall we go? Before we do, just one thing. Well? If you didn't try to kill me, who did? Who else knew about it? Nobody. Nobody except Flaherty, you, me, and... And Flaherty's secretary. Shall we go, Mr. Hastings? Well, yes, yes, I believe I could make such a test. Of course, we'd need injecting at least a CC into an infected guinea pig. Then we'd have to wait and do a biopsy. How long would it take? 24 hours at least. Okay, how much? $50. My friend will pay you. Your friend? Yeah, the gentleman will... Holy jumping sunfish. Sir? Look, you saw me come in with a guy just a minute ago, didn't you? Yes, sir, but he left when you started talking to me. Isn't that just dandy? Well, is something wrong? No, nothing much. You know what Barnum said about one being born every minute? Yes, sir. Well, he was talking about me. <laughs> well, I better get going. Well, yes, sir. Oh, sir, uh, what about that test? Okay, I suppose you might as well do it just for laughs. Send the report on the bill to Donald Hayson, private investigator, Cater Building. Yes, sir. much point in going back after Lehman. He was probably well on his way by this time. It was an all-around phony story from beginning to end. But still somewhere, hanging around the edges of my brain, was a funny kind of hunch. If Lehman had wanted to kill me, then who called me up to warn me? Lehman himself? Why? It didn't figure. I stopped to look up an address in the phone book, and then I invested 10 cents. Kathy? Yes? This is Sherlock. Oh, I'm glad. Glad? That you called, I mean. I I wanted to apologize to you for eavesdropping this afternoon. Well, why don't you do it over a cup of coffee? I have to talk to you. It's very late. Well, sleep late tomorrow, please. All right. Well, I meet you. Well, there's a coffee shop near your place. I'll be there in 15 minutes. dress and a short gray jacket. They went real well with her blue eyes and soft blonde hair. She seemed genuinely happy to see me. It threw me for a few seconds. And then I reminded myself I had already won the P.T. Barnum Award once that night. Sit down, Kathy. What is it? Do you know a man named Arthur C. Lehman? Am I supposed to? I'll refresh your memory. I had a talk with his honor about him. I... I don't remember. Look, I used to have a little Scotch terrier named Jocko. We liked each other. He used to lick my hand. All I want to know is, are you mixed up in it? What goes on? I don't know anything about it. Listen, Kathy, maybe I'm getting sentimental in my old age, but for a moment there, when you walked in, I thought you seemed genuinely glad to see me. Was it because you were glad I was still alive? Come on, give. Don, I like you. You're a nice guy. Why don't you let it alone? Call Flaherty and turn down the assignment. Give him back his vial and tell him you're not interested in finding Lehman. Would you do it? Well, if you want to help me so much, why not tell me what it's all about? I can't. I'd like to, but I can't. I've told you too much already. Somebody's got you real scared, honey. Who is it? You're too nice a girl to be mixed up in this garbage with a guy like Lehman. Come on, tell me. I can't. Just believe that, please. Get out of it now before it's too late. <laughs> Okay, honey, you can play it that way if you want, but to me it's as thin as a bowl of restaurant soup. Poor Jocko knew something and couldn't tell me. You know something and you won't tell me. Good night. I didn't go home. I spent the night in a local YMCA and I didn't sleep very well. It went around and around in my brain like a squirrel in a cage, but it didn't add up to anything when it came out. In the morning, I went straight to my office and locked myself in with a bottle of gin. By 10 o'clock, I had decided to quit the job, but before I could call Flaherty and tell him, the phone rang. Go ahead. Mr. Hayson. You got it. This is Dr. Gregory in the Bayside Biological Laboratory. If you want the money... It isn't about the money. What's up? Mr. Hayson... Do you have the formula for that serum you gave me? 
No, I know a guy who might, but he's in outer Mongolia by now. Why? Well, I've never seen anything quite like it. I don't know if it was just a freak of fate or what. happened? Well, that pig, that diseased guinea pig, Mr. Hayson, well, it completely recovered in 12 hours. Not only that, Mr. Hayson, but there is not a trace of the malignancy. That pig looks healthy enough to live another 100 years. <laughs> I could feel the sweat soaking into my undershirt as I put down the receiver. Where do we go from here? Was Lehman on the level after all? The next stop was Lehman's office. Maybe he wasn't in outer Mongolia. It was noon before I got there. The same janitor was on duty in the same dirty lobby. Hello there. Hi. You want something? Lehman. Who? Lehman. Never heard of him. Now, wait a minute, Junior. You remember me. Last night, five bucks, rear office, first floor. I don't know what you're talking about, mister. Oh, you want another five, huh, Junior? Well, this time, I don't buy. Get out of my way. Now, listen, mister. I can't let you just walk into that office. I'll try to stop you if you want to work tomorrow. But there's nobody in there. That office has... We'll see about that, Junior, right now. Holy mackerel. I told you, mister. <laughs> was bare. There were caps on the electrical outlets. Everything in the room was covered by a six weeks accumulation of dust that was undisturbed except for the footprints of the janitor and myself. Yet yesterday there had been a rug, telephones, desk, chairs, file cabinets. I checked the door number. 1B, that was it all right. Then I checked the janitor. He was standing there just looking stupid. But he looked a little too stupid. I figured I could make him talk, so I tried an old trick. I reached inside my hat band, took out an ordinary pin, and jabbed him hard on the arm. Hey, Al! What's the big idea, mister? Sit down, Junior. Hey, Sit but... down over here on the window ledge. Okay. Now, listen, I don't know anything. I... Maybe you saw something like this in the movies, Junior. There's this guy, see, a killer. And he sticks another guy with a needle that has a slow poison on the end of it, like I have right in this little glass vial. See it? And only this killer has the antidote. If the other guy doesn't talk, it's curtains in one minute. If he does, the killer will give him the antidote. Okay, Junior, talk. Well, I, I don't believe you. There's no poison in that pin. It's a joke. It's up to you, Junior. Don't you feel something different, though? Feel your heart speed up a little from the poison? Now, listen, I don't know anything. It makes you sweat, too. When it reaches the brain, that's when it really begins to work. You got 30 seconds to spill. Otherwise, Please. 25 seconds. Okay. Okay. He was here. He gave me $100 to forget it. He rented the office only a couple of days ago. And then last night, he said he was moving out. Said I shouldn't mention to anybody that he'd been here. An hour later, he was gone. Piles, furniture, and all. Don't know how I moved all that stuff out so fast. Now, that's all I know. Alice, that's all I know. Now, for God's sake, mister, give me that stuff. Don't let me just croak. I feel it. Relax, back. Junior. There was no poison. You're all right. A trick. Yeah, a trick. Thanks for the information. A trick. They tricked me. He said he'd kill me. Thanks I... again. <laughs> Hasten again, right back on the horns of ye old dilemma. The only thing I knew for sure at this point was that the serum was apparently not poisonous. And since my client was most concerned with that, I made my next stop the office of his honor, Mayor Big Mike Flaherty. I had the vial in my coat pocket. Hello, beautiful. Oh. I want to see his honor. He isn't in. I'll go into his office and wait. You can't. But I can. Come on in. I want to talk to you anyway. Please. Come on. Shut the door, huh? No? Okay, I'll shut it. Now sit. Okay, baby. Let's have a heart to heart conversation. I see you didn't listen to my warning. No, I didn't. What's more, I found out that this layman character is on the level about the serum. It works. You found that out, too. That's right. It leads me to an interesting conclusion, Kathy. Namely, that you're the one who tried to booby trap me. All right. Have it your way. What do you intend to do? Well, first, I'm going to give Flaherty that serum and let him cure himself. You mustn't do that. Why not? I. I can't tell you, but you mustn't. Down in a few minutes, Mike Flaherty will be here. 
Before he comes, I'll have to ask you to give me that serum. Try again. I don't hear so good. Maybe you'll hear this. It works, too, so don't try anything. Well, well. So now it comes out. Okay, Kathy, if you want to play that way, go ahead. Give me that serum. Why don't you shoot? I warn you, I may have no choice. Give it to me. Pull the trigger, baby. You're weakening. Don, please, don't make me kill you. Please. What is it, baby? True love or just weak in the knees? Oh, you better handle that gun. Oh, Don. Don, what can I do? I'm so mixed up. Yeah, that's better. Oh, what is it, Kathy? You're no killer. Tell me what's going on here. Maybe I can help you. You've got to trust me. No, no, I can't, Don. Believe me. I want to, but it's against the prime injunction. The what? Oh, you wouldn't understand. There's no way I could make you understand. Only believe me, Don, because I love you. You mustn't let Layman succeed in giving that serum to Mike Flaherty. The consequences would be, would be unimaginable. You know, Kathy, if you had come to me and level right at the start, maybe we could have worked something out. Maybe I'd be listening to you now. But you're a little late because I just heard Big Mike come into the outer office. He'll be here in a second. Don't. Don't, please. Come in. How do you do? Layman. I see she's been trying to get the vial from you, Mr. Hasten. I was afraid of that. I came over to make certain that Mr. Flaherty is permitted to drink the serum. Well, that's very noble of you, Layman, but I don't quite understand it. You have your 50 grand. What do you care whether Mike Flaherty lives or dies? Mr. Hasten, if Mike Flaherty dies, the opposition candidate will win the next election. That means a new political party will come into dominance in this city. The next president will be a representative of that party. I am most anxious to see that that does not happen. The entire future of our country, indeed, the history of the world, would be affected by it. He's telling the truth, Don. But events must be allowed to take their normal course. Don't listen to her, Hasten. She's tried to kill you once. She'd do it again. You know I'm telling the truth about that serum. She wants to see Flaherty die. Go ahead, ask her. It's true, isn't it, Kathy? You want Mike Flaherty to die. You don't understand. Listen, I'm getting pretty fed up with being told I don't understand. Understand what? I understand that in the past 24 hours, somebody's tried to kill me. I understand that Layman's serum will cure a guinea pig and probably a human. I understand that unless I'm completely insane, the entire contents of Layman's office vanished in a few minutes. I understand that you two seem to be more concerned with some nonsense that's going to take place in the future than... Holy smokes. Oh, no, no, it's too fantastic, just too fantastic to even think about. Something troubling you, Mr. Hasten? Perhaps I can help you. Perhaps you can, Layman. I'm going to ask you just one question. Very well. When are you from? <sighs> that does it, doesn't it, Mr. Layman? I've guessed your game. I'm afraid you have, Mr. Hasten. I am, as you surmise, a traveler from the future. And since you've stumbled upon it, perhaps Miss Cooper here would like to fill in her part of the story. But before she does, <laughs> up your hands, both of you. Higher. Don't move. I'll take that gun, Mr. Hasten. Now, Miss Cooper, you may enlighten our backward friend. Go ahead, Kathy. Both Layman and myself are from the future, Don. Why didn't you tell me? I couldn't. The prime injunction to time travelers is never to reveal their identity. The penalty is death. Since you've guessed it as we feared you might, there's no point in trying to conceal anything further. Go on. Mr. Layman's a fugitive from the era in which we live. Using one of our time machines, he came back to your time. And he sought to change things so that he'd be in a position of great power in the future. How do you figure to do that? If Larry lived long enough, he could dominate the political picture in America. You're almost right. Except in one detail, Miss Cooper. Flaherty he will not survive. He will live only long enough to gain a position of political dominance. Then I will remove him. And my own ancestor will take over the reins of power, leaving them eventually to me. I get it now. But there's one thing that bothers me. Who was trying to kill me? I was. You see, I was sent here to track down Layman. 
I said that spring before I met you, as soon as Flaherty hired you to help him. I did it on orders from the council. They were afraid you'd be successful in saving Flaherty's life. Then, unfortunately, I... I fell in love with you and couldn't go through with it. I called and warned you. You took credit for that, Lehman. I wanted to enlist you on my side, Mr. Heeson. However, it makes little difference at this point since you know the entire story. I have little choice now. Well, do you think you can get away with this? I believe I can, Mr. Heeson. There are two of us here who know your plans. By the time Mr. Flaherty returns to his office, there will be only one, myself. Goodbye, Mr. Heeson. It has been a pleasure. Not without a fight, you... <laughs> <laughs> Many people know how it feels to be shot in a forest. I saw Kathy jump toward the desk and push a button I hadn't noticed before. I remember a thud as if I'd been sandbagged, and then watching in amazement as the crimson spread down the front of my shirt. Then there was a loud, roaring noise, and everything went black. I died. Don't try to move, Don. Uh, Don't move yet. Uh, It'll take a few minutes for you to feel like yourself. Well, what? Holy jumping sunfish. I, I'm sitting in Flaherty's office. The, the blood. There was blood on my shirt and it's gone now. Here, here, drink this. Uh, I... I don't understand it. Have I been dreaming? Is the whole thing nothing but a nightmare? Well, it, it, it seemed so real that there was a man named Lehman. He, he pointed a gun at my head and shot me. I, I felt it. I tell you, I felt it. Don, Don, listen to me. Listen carefully. There isn't much time. And please, darling, please, this time, believe me. Listen. Go ahead. You were in this room. Lehman did shoot you. He, he killed you. You're insane. No. What he didn't know was that this office is a time machine. We rigged it that way, hoping to trap him here and take him back to future time. When I saw he was about to shoot you, I jumped for the switch that sets the machine into reverse. We went back into the past, before he killed you. That's where you are now. It's only a few minutes before Layman is going to knock on that door and come into the office. But it's too fantastic to believe, Kathy. It's true. What can I do? Break the vial. Break it now before Layman gets here. And then, when he comes, get the jump on him. Since you're the one who went back in time, you'll remember, but Layman won't. What'll happen to us? We'll appeal to the council. Perhaps they'll let us stay together. I, I can't make my brain believe this, Kathy. You must, Don. Don, for our own sake, for the future's sake. Break the vial now. In a moment, it'll be too late. Well, I, I, I don't know, Kathy. Clarity, his life depends on this little glass bottle. Don, please. It's Layman. Don, you've got to decide now. Now, quick. Come in, Mr. Lehman. We're ready for you. You've just heard another adventure into the unknown world of the future. The world of... The Master... Dimension X is presented each week by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of the magazine Astounding Science Fiction. Today, Dimension X has presented Untitled Story from the current issue of Astounding Science Fiction. It was written for radio by George Lefferts from the story by Frank M. Robinson. Featured in the cast were George Petrus as Hasten, and Sergeant as Kathy, Bernard Lenro as Layman. Your host was Norman Rose. Music by Albert Berman. Dimension X is produced by William Welch and directed by Fred Way. Dragnet, the story of your police force, is next on NBC.